The Isle of Voices. Chapter One. The Wizard of Molokai. Kalamaki was the Wizard of Molokai. He could see into the future with the help of evil spirits. Everyone in the Kingdom of Hawaii went to ask for his advice, and everyone was afraid of him. His enemies died in terrible ways. At night, he was seen in the high mountains, moving from one mountain to the other. He was also seen walking in the forest with his head high above the tall trees. Kalamaki looked strange. His skin was whiter than the other people's. His hair was the color of dry grass, and he was blind. The people of the island said, "Blind as Kalamaki, who can see the future." Lahua, Kalamaki's daughter, lived with her husband Kiola in her father's house. Kiola did not know much about his wife's father, but one thing troubled him. Kalamaki bought everything he wanted and paid with shiny new dollars. The people of the island said, "Shiny as Kalamaki's dollars." However, he never worked, and no one knew where his shiny new dollars came from. One day, Lahua went to visit a friend on the other side of the island, and the men of the village went fishing. But Kiola was lazy, and he did not go. He sat and watched the sea and the birds flying in the blue sky. He thought about Kalamaki's shiny dollars, and decided to find out where he hid his money. He remembered that late at night, when everyone was in bed, Kalamaki sat at his desk and looked at books. Then he could hear the sound of the drawer opening and closing slowly. That's where he probably hides his money," thought Kiola. He went to the desk drawer and looked at it for a moment. Then he opened it and saw Kalamaki's shiny dollars. "Ha! I was right," thought Kiola, closing the drawer. The next day, the ship, which came once a month with a lot of special things to eat and drink, Arrived in Molokai. Kiola stood in front of the house and watched the ship coming into the bay. If he can pay for those special things today, then he's certainly a wizard, and the dollars come from the devil. Kiola thought. While he was thinking, Kalamaki came and stood behind him. The old wizard was worried. Is that the ship? He asked. Yes, answered Kiola. It'll be here soon. Well, said Kalamaki seriously. Then I must tell you my secret, Kiola. Come into the house. So they went into the elegant living room. There was a shelf with a lot of books. A Bible on the table and pictures on the walls. It was the living room of a rich man. Close the windows, while I lock all the doors," said Kalamaki. He opened the desk drawer and took out some necklaces and some leaves from trees. Now. I'm going to do something magic," said Kalamaki. He put the Bible under the sofa and got a mat. He put the leaves on some sand in a little pan. Then he and Kiola put on the necklaces and sat on opposite sides of the mat. "Don't be afraid," said the wizard, lighting the leaves and saying strange words. The smoke and the strange words confused Kiola. Suddenly, the mat and the living room disappeared.
A moment later, Keola and the wizard were on the same mat on a beach near the sea under the hot sun. Keola was very surprised and did not know what to say. What's happening? cried Keola. Why are we on this beach and not in our living room? Don't worry, said Kalamaki. Now we're here. Where are we? cried Keola. That's not important, said Kalamaki. We're here now, and that's the important thing. Go to the woods and bring me a lot of these special leaves. Be quick. We must be home before the ship arrives. Keola got up from the mat and started walking on the beach of bright sand and shiny shells. Why don't I know this beach? Keola thought, looking around. This place doesn't look like Hawaii. One day I'll come back here and take these beautiful shells. He soon found the special leaves he was looking for in the woods near the beach. As he walked towards the trees, he saw a young woman with nothing on her body but some leaves. When she heard him walking, she was very frightened and looked around, but strangely, she did not look at Keola. Good afternoon, he said. Please don't be frightened. The young woman ran into the woods and he followed her. He saw other people running away and decided to go back to Kalamaki with the special leaves. Keola told the wizard about his adventure in the woods. All this is like a dream, said Kalamaki. I don't think anyone saw me, said Keola. And no one did, because we're invisible, thanks to my magic, said the wizard. But they can hear us, so we must speak softly. Kalamaki picked up some stones and made a circle around the mat. He put some leaves in the middle. Now. You must burn these leaves on the fire, Kalamaki said. While the leaves are burning, I'll do my magic. Before the leaves become black, the same magic that brought us here will take us back home. Be careful and call me before the fire dies. I don't want to be left on this beach. As soon as the leaves started burning, the wizard jumped out of the circle and began running on the beach and picking up shells. It seemed to Keola that the shells shone as he took them. When Keola put the last leaves on the fire, he cried, Come back, Kalamaki! Come back! The leaves are almost burnt! Kalamaki ran back very fast and jumped on the mat. As soon as he jumped on the mat, the fire died and the beach disappeared. In a moment, they were suddenly back in the living room, and there were a lot of shiny dollars on the mat. Keola opened the windows and saw the ship in the bay. Chapter 2 The Sea of the Dead That same night, Kalamaki put five dollars in Keola's hand. Keola, he said, if you're a clever man, you'll forget what you saw this afternoon. It was only a dream. Remember, only a dream. Keola never said anything about this adventure. But he thought about it all the time, and he became lazy. Why do I have to work when my father-in-law can make dollars from shells? He thought. He bought expensive clothes with the five dollars, 
But then he was sorry. Why didn't I buy a concertina with that money? He thought. I could play it all day long. Keola was angry with Kalamaki. That man can take dollars from the beach, and I don't have any money for a concertina. He thought. That night, he spoke to his wife Lahua and complained about Kalamaki. He told her about their adventure on the beach. My father's a dangerous man when he gets angry," said Lahua. "You know what happened to his enemies? They all died in a terrible way. You're a baby in my father's hands. Be careful, Keola." Keola was afraid of Kalamaki, but his wife's words made him angry. "You're wrong, Lahua," he shouted, and went to Kalamaki. Kalamaki. He said, "I want a concertina." Really," said Kalamaki. "Yes," said Keola. "You take dollars from the beach, so you certainly have money for a concertina." "You're a brave man, Keola," said Kalamaki. "I thought you were lazy and useless, but you're not. I'm very happy about this." Perhaps you can be my assistant in this difficult business. You'll have the best concertina in Hawaii, and tonight, you and I will go and find money. Are we going back to the beach? Asked Keola. No, no," said Kalamaki. "You must learn more about my secrets. This time." I'll teach you to catch fish. Meet me tonight near Peely's boat, and don't tell anyone about our business. His voice was warm and friendly, and Keola was happy. Why can't we use your boat tonight? Asked Keola. Peely's boat is better, and tomorrow, you'll understand why. Said Kalamaki. Very well," said Keola happily. "All a man needs is a little courage," thought Keola. When he saw Lahua, he wanted to tell her everything. But no," he thought. "I'll wait until I can show her the concertina. Then she'll understand that I'm a clever man." That night. Kalamaki and Keola took Peely's boat and went out to sea. It was a windy night and the sea was rough. The wizard had a lantern that he held with his finger. He and Keola talked together like old friends about magic and money. Look," said the wizard, "there is Molokai behind us." This part of the sea is called the Sea of the Dead. It's very deep here, and the bottom of the sea is covered with the bones of men. When a man falls into the sea here, he drowns, and his bones go to the bottom, where the evil spirits live. Keola was afraid and looked at Kalamaki. By the light of the stars and the lantern, the wizard seemed to change. What's the matter? Asked Keola. Are you ill? I'm not ill, said the wizard. But someone here's very ill. Suddenly, Kalamaki's hand started growing, and it became huge. Keola screamed and covered his face. Kalamaki held up the lantern and said, "Look at my face." His head got bigger and bigger, and he continued growing. Keola sat in front of him and screamed with terror. "And now," said the wizard, "what do you think about the concertina? Or perhaps you want a flute? Well." 
I must get out of this little boat now. I'm too big for it. Kalamaki stood up and jumped into the sea, and he continued growing. He stood in the deep sea, and his head and shoulders were like an island. He was huge and frightening. He took Pili's boat in his hand and broke it into pieces, and Keola fell into the deep, rough sea. I'm taking the lantern with me, said the wizard, because I must walk a very long way to get to the island. Ah, I can feel the bones under my feet. Kalamaki turned and walked away with big steps. Keola watched him disappear in the night, holding the lantern above his head. Keola was terrified and began swimming, but he did not know where he was going. Suddenly, he heard the voices of men on a big ship. Help! He cried loudly. Help! The men on the ship heard him and pulled him out of the water. They gave him food, water, and dry clothes. He did not want to return to Hawaii because he did not want to see Kalamaki again, so he decided to work on the ship. Chapter 3 Keola Escapes There was a lot of good food to eat on the ship, and Keola became fat. The captain was a kind man, but the mate was not. He was big and strong and did not like Keola. He hit him and said unkind things to him every day. Keola was unhappy about this because he tried to do his work well. He came from a good family and they treated each other kindly. But worst of all, Keola could never sleep. When he tried to sleep, the mate always woke him up angrily. After some time, he decided to leave the ship. One beautiful night, the sea was calm and there were thousands of stars in the sky. Keola was steering the ship and he could see a small island with palm trees on it. The captain and the mate saw it too and looked at it with their telescope. Have you ever been on that island? asked the mate. No. But I know it, said the captain. Ships never go there, and no one lives on it. Really? said the mate. One night I sailed near the island and saw a lot of lights on the beach. Perhaps some people lived there. Perhaps, but we won't stop there, said the captain. We'll just sail by the island. He turned to Keola and shouted, Did you hear me, Keola? Sail by the island, but don't go too close to it. Keola listened to the captain and the mate as they talked. This island is perfect for me, he thought. Ships never go there, so the mate won't find me, and Kalamaki can't possibly come this far. When the captain and the mate went away, he quietly steered very close to the island. The mate suddenly came back and saw that the ship was sailing towards the island. What are you doing? He shouted angrily. You fool! You're steering the ship too close to the island. Keola quickly jumped from the ship into the Black Sea and swam towards the island. He was not afraid because the sea was calm and warm, and he had his sailor's knife to fight sharks. The sea pushed him into a big lagoon where he could see thousands of shiny stars. There were palm trees all around him. The next morning, Keola looked everywhere, but he could not find anyone. He only found some old huts, and he made his home there. He fished and cooked his fish over the fire. 
he climbed the tall palm trees and got green coconuts. He drank their milk because there was no water on the island. The days were long and the nights were very frightening. He made a lamp from a coconut shell, and in the evening he sat in his hut, lit his lamp, and trembled until morning. Oh, I'm very unhappy and afraid. He often thought. All this time he lived in his hut near the lagoon and the palms. One day he went to the beach near the sea, but he did not like the bright sand, the shiny shells, and the hot sun. He looked around and was amazed. How is this possible? He thought. This is like Kalamaki's beach. Perhaps white men don't know everything about sailing. We probably sailed in a circle, and I'm near Molokai. Is this the beach where Kalamaki gets his dollars? The thought frightened him, and he decided not to go to the beach again. About a month later, some boats arrived. The people looked friendly and spoke a different language. But many of the words were the same as Hawaiian, so it was easy to understand. The men behaved in a polite way, and the women were friendly. They were very kind to Kiola, and built him a new hut. He was surprised because they never sent him to work with the other men. They even gave him a wife. When Kiola realized that his new wife was the same girl he saw on the island the first time, he began to get worried. I've left my home, my wife Lahua, and my friends in Molokai. Kiola thought sadly. I've travelled far to escape from Kalamaki, and now I'm on his magic island. This is terrible. Why didn't I stay in Molokai? Kiola stayed in his hut near the lagoon and never went to the other side of the island. He spoke very little. He did not trust his new friends because they were too kind. After his terrible experience with Kalamaki, he was very careful. He told them nothing about himself, only his name. And the name of his islands, the Eight Islands. He also told them about the king's palace in Honolulu, and that he was a friend of the king. Kiola asked the people of the tribe a lot of questions, and learned a lot of new things. The island where he was living was called the Isle of Voices, and it belonged to the tribe. However. They lived on another island called the Green Island most of the year. It was about three hours away by boat. They had their homes, gardens, chickens, and pigs on the Green Island. They travelled to the Isle of Voices once a year when the fish around the Green Island became poisonous. After Kiola escaped from the ship, the captain and the mate sailed to the Green Island. The mate died there because he ate poisonous fish. The people of the island told him that the fish was poisonous, but he was stupid and did not listen to them. This was good news for Kiola, because he was afraid of the mate and did not want to see him again. Chapter Four: The Isle of Voices. The people of the tribe told Kiola about the Isle of Voices. The island got its name from the invisible devils that lived on the beach near the sea. These invisible devils talk to each other in strange languages. Little fires appeared and disappeared on the beach day and night, but no one understood why. Kiola was very surprised to hear this. Does this happen on the Green Island too? Asked Kiola. No, never. Answered one man. It never happens on any other island, only here. But you mustn't worry.
because the devils live on the beach near the sea, and not at the lagoon. Remember, the devils won't hurt you if you leave them alone. Kyola knew he was safe at the lagoon, but he wanted to do something about the devils. One day, he went to speak to the chief of the tribe. There was an island that had problems with invisible devils, Kyola told the chief, and the people solved it. How did they do that? asked the chief. There was a tree growing in the woods that had magic leaves, he said, and the devils came to get the leaves. So the people of the island cut it down and the devils went away. What kind of tree was it? asked the chief. Giola showed him the tree with the magic leaves that Kalamaki used. The chief and other men seemed interested in his plan. Every night, the chief and the old men of the tribe talked about his plan, but the chief was afraid. Remember, said the chief to the other men. A chief once threw his spear at one of the voices, and that night he fell out of a palm tree and was killed. The men decided to forget Kiola's plan. Kiola began to feel happy with his new life and the things around him. He was kind to his wife, and she loved him very much. But one day he came home and found her on the floor crying. What's the matter, dear? said Kiola softly. Oh, it's nothing, Kiola, she said, crying. The same night she woke him up, and by the low light of the lamp, Kiola could see her sad face. Kiola, she said softly, come very close to me, because I must whisper. No one must hear us. Kiola moved closer to her, and she continued. Two days before we leave the island, go and stay in the woods. We'll choose the place and hide food there. Every night I'll come to the secret place and I'll sing. If you don't hear me singing, it means that we are no longer on the island. Then you can come out of the woods safely. Kiola was confused and frightened when he heard this. What's happening? He cried. I can't live among the devils. I don't want to stay on this island alone. I want to leave it. My poor Kiola, said the girl sadly. You'll never leave this island alive. You see, my people are cannibals. They eat men. They have always eaten men. But this is a secret. They'll eat you before we leave. Oh, my poor Kiola, I love you very much, but I can't take you to the Green Island. Kiola was terrified. Every part of his body trembled. He knew about cannibals in the South Sea Islands, and this always frightened him. He heard from travellers that cannibals took good care of the man they wanted to eat. Now he understood why he had a new hut, a wife, and lots of good food, and he never worked. He lay on his bed and thought about his terrible future. The next day the people of the tribe were kind and friendly as they always were. They spoke politely and made beautiful poetry and they told funny stories at meals. But Keola did not care about this. All he could see were the white teeth in their mouths, and he felt sick. When they finished eating, he went to his hut and lay down like a dead man. The next day everything was the same. His wife followed him. Keola, she said, you must eat, or you'll be killed and cooked tomorrow. The old chiefs say you're ill and you'll get thin. 
Kiela got up and looked at his wife. I don't care, he said angrily. If I must die, I'll die the quickest way. Let the devils eat me and not the men. Goodbye. He turned around and started walking to the other side of the island. Chapter 5 The Battle with the Invisible Enemy The sun was hot on the other side of the island and there were no people. But there were footprints on the sand and Keola could hear voices and whispers everywhere. Little fires appeared and disappeared all over the beach. All the languages of the world were spoken on that beach. French, Dutch, Russian, Chinese and many others. Devils and wizards from all parts of the world whispered to each other. The beach was very crowded, but Keola could see no one and he was not afraid any more. When the fires appeared he jumped on them. Strange voices called, and invisible hands threw sand on the fires, and they were gone before he could reach them. I'm lucky that Kalamaki is not here, he thought. I know he wants to kill me. He sat down near the woods because he was tired. The beach in front of him was alive with voices and fires. The shells disappeared, and new ones appeared as he sat there. The last time I was here with Kalamaki, the beach was quiet, thought Keola. Today there are hundreds of wizards and devils taking millions of dollars and flying high in the air. He was dizzy and confused. Now I know that all the money in the world is made here, on this beach. Keola thought. Soon Keola was asleep and he forgot the island and his many problems. Early the next morning a noise woke him up and he was afraid. Perhaps the tribe's looking for me, he thought immediately. But it was not the tribe. On the beach the voices called and shouted and they passed in front of him. What's this? thought Keola. Something strange is happening because there are no fires and the shells are not disappearing. But the invisible voices continue talking and their voices are angry. He looked around. They're not angry at me, thought Keola, because they pass in front of me. Keola started running with the voices. He ran from one part of the island to the other. He remembered that the wizard's favorite trees grew together in one part of the woods. At that place there was a great noise of screaming men. Soon he could hear the noise of axes and loud screaming voices. Perhaps the chief has decided to cut down the magic trees, he thought. And now the wizards and the devils are angry and are trying to defend their trees. He wanted to see what was happening. He walked across the beach, got to the woods, and stopped. He was amazed. He saw one tree fall, and then others started falling. The men of the tribe were there fighting, and bodies lay on the ground covered with blood. Fear was on their faces as they fought and screamed. What a strange battle! thought Keola. The cannibals were fighting bravely, but Keola did not see the enemy. They raised their axes high in the air and then hit something invisible. And here and there, Keola saw an axe without hands kill a man of the tribe as his spirit ran away screaming. Keola looked at this terrible battle for some time, but then it frightened him too much and he wanted to run away. Suddenly, the high chief of the tribe saw him and called his name. The whole tribe looked at him, and he saw their white teeth. I must run away from here, thought Keola, running out of the woods and down to the beach. He was terrified, 
and did not care where he was going. Kiola, said a voice on the beach. Lehua, he cried. Is that you? He looked everywhere for her, but could not see her. She was invisible. I saw you running before, the voice said. I called you, but you didn't hear me. Quick, go and get the leaves, and we'll be free. Are you there? asked Kiola. With the mat? Yes, I'm here at your side, and I have the mat, she said. And he felt her arms around him. Oh, Kiola, be quick! Get the leaves before my father gets back. Chapter six. Back in Molokai. Kiola was glad that Lahua was near him. He knew he had to get the wizard's leaves, and there was little time. But he was afraid, very afraid. He thought about the battle in the woods, and knew it was dangerous to be there. I must be brave and go. He thought. Lahua is waiting for me. He ran back to the woods, got the leaves, and returned to Lahua. She helped him put his feet on the mat, and then she made the fire. As it was burning, Kiola heard the noise of the battle in the woods. The wizards and the cannibals were fighting desperately and screaming. It was a long, terrible battle. And all this time, Kiola stood there and listened and trembled. He watched as Lehua's invisible hands put the leaves in the fire. She worked quickly. The flames grew high and almost burnt his hands. When the last leaf was burnt, Kiola and Lehua were at home again on their island, Molokai. Kiola was very happy when he could finally see his wife, Lehua, and he was pleased to be home again in Molokai, in front of a good bowl of poi. There was no poi on the ship or on the Isle of Voices. But most of all, he was happy because he escaped from the cannibals. However, Kiola and Lahua were worried about another problem, and they talked about it all night. Kalamaki was still on the Isle of Voices. If Kalamaki stays on the Isle of Voices, we're safe and we can live happily. Said Kiola, but if he returns to Molokai, we're both in great danger. Remember, my father is a wizard and can grow big, and he can walk in the deep sea. Said Lahua. I know. Said Kiola, but the Isle of Voices is far away. It's in the dangerous archipelago. Let's find it on a map. Good idea. Said Lahua. There are some old maps in the living room. There's probably a map of Hawaii and the dangerous archipelago among them. He went to the bookshelf in the living room and got down some old maps. After a while, they found one of Hawaii. Lahua soon found where the island was. It's a long way for an old man to walk," said Kiola. "Yes, it is," said Lahua. But don't forget, my father's a wizard. Kiola thought for a moment and said, "Let's go and talk to a white missionary. Perhaps he can help us." A white missionary? Asked Lahua, confused. Perhaps he can help us," said Kiola. Missionaries know a lot of things. Kiola found a white missionary and told him the long story. The missionary was a clever man and listened carefully to Kiola. You married a second wife while you were on the Isle of Voices," said the missionary. "That's wrong, very wrong." Kiola did not know what to say. All the other things you've told me are confusing and mysterious," said the missionary. And I really don't understand them. Kiola and Lahua looked at each other. However, 
said the missionary. If Kalamake made money in a dishonest way, give some of it to the poor people of the island. Uh, you can also give some to the missionaries. Your adventure on the Isle of Voices is very strange, and you mustn't tell anyone about it. It's your secret. But the missionary went to the police in Honolulu. Be careful, he told them, because Kalamake and Keola made counterfeit money while they were on the Isle of Voices. Keep an eye on them. Keola and Lahua listened to the missionary and gave a lot of dollars to the poor people of the island and to the missionaries. They were lucky because they did not see Kalamaki again. Was he killed during the battle? Or is he still living on the Isle of Voices? No one knows.